from my lowest, take me higher Can you see me through the ashes and the smoke? I wish you did oh, 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 take my heart away Looking for the moon I'll be here While you're searching for your life in the dark Hey, there he is Oh man That's the guy <laughs> What's going on? Man, how are you? I'm great, dude. Thank you for having me. Dude, thank you for like coming on. Oh, of course, man. It's the pleasure's mine. Oh. <laughs> um, dude, you you are a magnificent human being. Oh man, come on. That's such a huge compliment. Thank you so much. Dude, your art is it it I don't know, man. It just touches your soul, right? Man, that means the world. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, you're welcome, dude. And it's well deserved. I mean, you uh, take this shit off. You have uh you have truly, you know, I mean, just in the little time I've had to to delve into you, dive into you, you've really settled my heart down and <laughs> and settled my 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 perspective on life instead of going a million miles a minute. Oh man, that honestly, that I, I couldn't ask for, for anything else for why I do this. So that's literally the only reason why I ever put out anything. So thank you. That means the world really. You're welcome. Well, let's get started. How did you start? Like, what was the beginning for you in regards to like, maybe I want to do this. Maybe this is something yeah. that's serious to me. Sure. I, uh, so I started off in, in um, jazz, actually. So my, my grandfather was a pretty popular jazz musician during his time, and he played with this band um, called The Offbeats. And uh, in the band, there was this guitarist named Danny Gatton, and he was just like an absolutely unbelievable jazz guitarist. And I mean, he, he played everything, but he was unreal. And my grandfather used to show me videos of him when I was little, and in playing with him and he used to tell me all this stuff that he could do, how many frets he could stretch his fingers and all sorts of stuff like that. And so I was like, I was just around music for a very, very long time. And my, uh, obviously with my grandfather and my dad um, was a piano player and a drummer for a really, really long time. And it's just kind of very much in my blood. And uh, the, uh, I used to watch these videos of my grandfather and just see how much he adored this person. And I was like, oh man, that's so cool that, you know, like I saw how many people adored this guy and how, how much power he had and how he played. And I was like, all right, I want to do this. So when I was like six, I got into uh, lessons with a jazz teacher and then I did um, jazz guitar, like pretty specific jazz guitar for uh, about eight years or so and got all the way uh, until I left for high school, for boarding school. And that's when I started doing the, uh, the more I, I kind of hung up jazz. I was, I was like very grateful for everything that I learned from jazz and things like that. But um, I felt myself kind of losing the, uh, the creative passion for it a little bit. And I was like, this isn't really as much what I care about anymore. And um, I fell in love with the acoustic side of stuff and with the acoustic finger style guitar and how, how people could just also just with like human emotion and the psychology of how people respond to music and things like that. I was, I was just obsessed with it. Um, and so I kept just digging in more and more, but I also sat on my music. I didn't show anybody anything. Um, and it wasn't until I actually, like when I was in high school, I, I played this one, nobody knew that I, I played guitar or anything. I played this one song that I had written on the guitar. There were no vocals, no anything for everybody. And I think everybody was just so like surprised that I could even play because I just didn't talk about it. Um, and everybody reacted so powerfully. I had people telling me that, that, that you know, reminded them of somebody that passed away or that, uh, you know, made them go call their friend or like, I, it was just all of this stuff was very overwhelming, but it was overwhelming in the best way possible because I was like, oh, this is very special. And it just that I think that moment was kind of when I realized how how powerful music was psychologically speaking, and then when it comes to emotion. And so from that point forward, that was like what everything was about for me. It was just like chasing that emotional connection with music for myself, and trying to bring people something that they wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. 
Um, but I still didn't think it was realistic until I put things on uh, social media and seeing the response there. And then it was like the moment that I saw the opportunity to make it so that I could do this on a larger scale, I was like, you know, screw everything else. I just like went for it. Fortunately, I graduated college. I, I, I wanted to get the piece of paper, but um, I was so close. So I just figured I would finish, but it was like, you know, I graduated early, took a bunch of, immediately started taking summer classes and things like that and got out of there as quickly That's as tough, possible. Father. It was, it was, it was tough, but it's also like, when I have this thing that's driving it, where it's like, it's all working towards what exactly what I'm doing right now. Uh, it was so worth it. Every moment of it was so worth it. And just to see like, it, it's things like what you said at the beginning, like that makes everything. So I would do that a billion times uh, to have somebody have that experience with my music a billion times, just even just one person, you know? Um, so I have a, a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, in the boarding school, does is that tough for you? And does that make you more introspective when it, when it comes to your writing? I think so. I think <clears throat> that whole experience was interesting because I I uh, I went there for soccer, so I it was like a sports boarding school, um, kind of like. IMG Academy in Florida. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It wasn't that, but it was like a similar to that. It's called Shattuck St. Mary's in Minnesota. Um, and ironically, my first show is in Minnesota, so that'll be interesting. But um, it made it very, uh, I had a very different high school experience than I think most people do. You know, it was, it was very like forced me to learn time management, forced me to be disciplined, it forced me to like, but it also allowed me to kind of pursue the things that I was really passionate about. That was why I chose to go there. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have left, chosen to leave my home and go so far away to someplace that was deathly cold if I wasn't, you know, really benefiting from it. So I think there, the biggest thing that I took away from there was actually uh, the uh, separation from what I knew it was taking a step out and then being able to just be with myself and start to try to figure myself out. That's why it took me so long to show anybody my music is because I was just doing it on my own. And then once I did show it, it was like this just, I was so grateful for the time I had spent doing everything on my own because it was like building to this moment where I revealed it and then having that emotional response come back. Um, I will never forget that. And I wouldn't have had that if I hadn't gone to boarding school for sure so I think it also like has informed those emotions of like missing home and you know being away from people or separation from people that you love or even just like most so many of the experience of the experiences that I've written about came from that place too same thing and they came they came from my entire life but or other people's lives uh, like broken wasn't about me um it was about somebody else that I thought was it doing. was about you it was not That's the song. I swear to God, I was listening to, I can't probably show you, but that's the song I was listening to when I said, Hey guy, like that was, I took off my headphone and that's what I was listening to. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That song is not about me actually. That was, and this wasn't from uh, um boarding school, but this is from uh college. Um, it was same sort of thing though. It was like, I was studying psychology and I was studying depression I was studying um, just kind of like attachment styles and things like that. And all of that was informing this like story that I was just watching. It, it all has to do with, with people. My passion yeah, is your major people. psychology is my major. Yep. Mine too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Did you specialize in anything or was it just, just, I just got a general psychology. I was going, uh, I was doing some sort of, I was doing a program for children cool. with, um, uh, drug and alcohol dependencies. Oh, that's awesome. And um, so I was working out of a place. It's I, my shit is so weird, dude. I was in the military for 12 years. I got out because wow. I, I wanted to be with my son uh, because I was about to go again to Iraq. I mean, I can't, I've already went three times. You know, Thank, I spent, you, Thank you for your service. It's amazing. You're welcome. Man. I appreciate you uh, appreciating it. Uh, so I end up go, getting out and like I was, I spent two, you know, two and a half years straight there and I just can't, I couldn't do it anymore. And especially like 
at that moment, I just had a kid and he was acknowledging me. Like, like when I would, you know, come home from work, he would be like, Oh dad. Like, and I just, I came home one day and said, nah, I can't do it no more. Yeah. And so I got into psychology, which got at the same time I was doing a, like a online radio, like this is back in like early mid two thousands, like a podcast yeah, yeah. I turned into a radio station and I, that's how I use my psychology is doing comedy. It's amazing. That's no, that that's, it's funny because I think like it's such a valuable degree, mostly just because it can inform literally anything that you're doing. Like no matter what you go into, just having a general understanding of how people behave and why they react to certain things and how we all kind of process different things coming in. I I'm obsessed with it, but that really was like, and is my passion i love music but it music is is the uh tool for me to connect with people that is that is really what it is and i i mean like really if i if you're gonna ask me what do i love music but i'm passionate about people's connection with music and people's emotion towards music and like the emotions you can solicit from music i think it's unbelievable and, and something it's like it can't be measured what you feel with music all i know is there's something that happens in my chest area yeah you know what i mean that allows the 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 gates and guards i put up in my head to to lower yeah and and you do that dude oh, thank you there's very few people who do that and you do that thank you. Uh, a guy named banners too he oh um, yeah 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 he's awesome and, and i you know, I have so many memories with him in my life. And, you know, I've interviewed him once, but it has nothing to do with the interview, like all my memories with him. Right. I, I think it's a it's very special when you get to be a part of somebody's life in a way that you don't even necessarily know. And then or might not ever know. Might not ever know, right. But then to hear it, it's like th- to have somebody come and tell you that or or just like to know that you're in somebody's life or you've brought somebody something some sort of peace is pretty amazing but you know and everything has been digital for me everything because it started during the pandemic and then or like during the first quarantine we're still in it but the, during the first quarantine period and then uh now like i've never played live like uh as myself you know anything like that and then um what state not- are you in I'm in California right now. I'm in. No way, you are. Yeah, too- I just moved to LA. Shit. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can do something. You want to? Are you in LA? I'm in Ventura. Oh, nice. Okay. It's like an hour away, right? Yeah. 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 What part of LA you're in? Yeah, man. I'm in. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in like uh, Echo Park, Silver Echo Park, Lake, Silver Lake area. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, man, it's it's. Uh, I love it here, but I. Uh, doing my first show i'm like i literally have rehearsal today for my my first show coming up so it's like the first opportunity i get to have that kind of like uh you know actual real connection with people and see them with their face in front of me and talk to them and things like that that's very special to me so um check out our youtube or not our youtube our instagram and we have a um we do like a podcast and we have artists on every week uh if you're interested i would love to have you on sick i'll take a look at it yeah if it's your thing awesome man is it just no cover no cover underscore ventura vta oh vta there it is yeah sweet if there's something you're into like we'll do it and even like like this weekend i have a charity event i'm doing yeah want to roll through um it's at the ventura theater Sweet, man. I'll let you know. That sounds awesome. Um, another question I had is, how does your family react to your music? Like, you have to be, like, that's a, fam- a musical family. Are you nervous to bring, them to, bring it to them? <laughs> or are you proud? Like, look at this. Or how is that I, dynamic? I didn't tell, it took a long time for me to be able to, like, share stuff with my family also. I was just very, very closed off about my um music in general and uh just because I don't know I like it's funny because I think about it now and it's just so silly but I was so embarrassed 
And like, I'm still, to be honest, I'm still working to get over a lot of it, like singing. And I've, I've had this, I started singing just a little over a year ago and to have to like, you know, I've spent the last year basically I'm trying to re convince myself that I'm a singer and that like I singing is like a cool thing. You know, it's not like weird. It's not whatever. And it's so ridiculous because I know that that's, it's, it's amazing. It's a gift but it still comes with that kind of internal battle that I have often. So I'm st- I was always afraid to like share things with them, but they could not be more supportive of my stuff. I mean, I'm incredibly grateful to be in, with, in a family uh, that is so supportive, um, but they are just like my biggest fans. Like they are, they're awesome. And they, they inform a lot of my writing too. They also like, you know tell me what they like what they don't like i i trust them wholeheartedly when they oh, so they feedback. do give you like oh yeah they oh, give me feedback this or because i wouldn't know how to like if my son like i guess i would consider myself oh a radio guy right or a podcast guy and if he came up to me and said or even a promoter like my son got into it and said oh what do you think like i wouldn't know if I should be honest, you know what I mean? Or just no, I, I appreciate the honesty so much more because also I, a, I trust them as my parents, but I also trust them as just like listeners, just people that are not going to like bullshit me. They're just going to give it to me straight. And I like, I appreciate that so much more um, specifically like my mom, she's always been like that where she's been so incredibly supportive of everything that I've done but she is the first one to say when something is shit. And I love <laughs> her doing that because it's like, I, it's great. Same thing, like whenever I played a soccer game, uh, you know, she'd be there with all the love and support. But if it was a terrible game, she'd be like, yeah, that was a pretty shit game for you. But she's not ever going to be like, you know, imposing or anything like that. It's just the kind of thing where you just hear it and you just like, yeah, okay, got it. And then you move on to the next. <laughs> it out. So I think, with my parents, they're, they're awesome. I love them. I trust them. With my sister, um, my sister is on my management team. So I work with her directly with all of this stuff. And so she, uh, she's, I think she's the one that you coordinated with. Okay. Um, but she is, uh, I mean, having her on this project makes all the difference for me because it's, I also know that she always has my best interest at heart. She's always protecting me. It's the same thing as my parents where she's going to tell me if something is shit, but at the same time, it's like having her so directly involved in the project makes this a very family and very like heart oriented thing, which I love. Um, so that, that means the world to me too. Awesome. Um, your previous, your single that's out right now is Drowning. Yep. Um, well, about to be out. It's coming oh, in. It's not out yet? four days yep it's coming in four days what about is chasing a dream coming out the 11th catching a dream is already oh, out. catching a dream sorry yeah, oh okay dream. i got them backwards i'm sorry that's, that's right I'm... that's okay all right let me reverse that um uh catching a dream is out now um yep. let's tell me about that song like what was going through your head when you wrote it what was the headspace and if you want to divulge what is it about yeah that song that song was super fun um, that song was about uh, just kind of like I was in a period where I was very uh, like drowning in oh, that's an unfortunate choice of words, but I was very swamped with school and uh, lots of things that I didn't want to be doing. Um, and I think my I found solace in the idea of like escaping to some other place in your mind and the place that you go to when you are not thinking. And when you step away from the stuff that's weighing you down and you just like get into this world where everything's magical and cool. And it's like, yeah, this is the world that I want to be in. So I wanted to like write a kind of almost fantastical, whimsical world. Um, and then just sing that you're just like, don't worry about me, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm in the dream. I'm in a dream world. And so that's kind of like the, the general sentiment of the story is like, I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. Cause right now I'm just going to be, chilling with these magical creatures sort of thing <laughs> that was kind of the the thought that i had for that but it was that one was super fun right that's interesting um do you feel and this is just touching on that i remember when i was growing up and i used to sleep i was younger i was fairly religious at the time uh not as much right now mm. but i would feel 
that when I would sleep, I would go somewhere. When I, I would leave, like mentally or, uh, but I just, when I came back, I couldn't remember. Is yeah. that at all anything? Uh, that, that's the exact sentiment I'm talking about. It was like the catching a dream thing. Like we, I, I really liked the idea of like a dream catcher because that's something that, you know, when you forget your dream, it supposedly gets caught by the dream catcher. Um, but I love that because you have no control. The, the, honestly, the, I write about dreams a lot in like the stuff that I've written recently because I just think it's such a crazy concept to me is that you, you have no control over it, yet it's your mind that's creating this world. So it's like, it's in there. You have the ability to go somewhere else, uh, but you don't. And then you wake up and don't remember it. Like, what is that? So I, I totally agree with you. It's, it's, uh, that definitely was the kind of feeling that I was going for when I was thinking about it. It was just, where do you go when you sleep? It's a Billie Eilish song. It's about that too. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just fascinated with that concept. Like, what? Mm -hmm. the, how do you just go somewhere else? I don't know. But I think that world is a cool place. And I also, I sort of feel like tempted, maybe not tempted is the right word, but curious, curious about doing something like a DMT because yeah. you could go, maybe you have, maybe it's the same place you're going, but you have more knowledge of what's happening there or more visuals or I don't know. That, no, I, I'm, you're right. That whole world is, is very fascinating to me too. I'm not going to endorse or not endorse it just for the sake of you know me, that's but I'm still like, the, the, that's very psychologically based. It's very like, you know, rooted in what is happening in your brain. And it's kind of like an interesting conversation of what's real and what's not real. Um, and I know people that have done that have had insane stories. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have any experience with that, but um, it's definitely something that I find fascinating. Um, now let's uh, switch gears to drowning. It's out the 11th of this month. Uh, February, February, February 11th, 2022, just a few days away. Um, right. What? It, tell me about this song. It's a, it's a pretty special one for me. It was kind of a, um, it's a bit of a re return back to like the, the broken sentiment and back to something that I think is like important to have. I think it's no matter what happens with the song, how well it does, whatever, I think it's extremely important that this song is out there because I think it's a story that is going to resonate with people. Um, I wrote it about somebody very close to me who is in um, a relationship that basically is very important to them, but just continuously wears them down. Um, and it's gotten to the point now where it's kind of like, you have to cut they have to cut them off otherwise they're they're not going to be able to survive on their own anymore um and that kind of feeling of just having something that you care so deeply about but you need to let it go because you just can't handle it anymore um is really a, a gut-wrenching thing i think and so that's what the song is about it's just having to let somebody go that you care about so much but it's for your own sake because otherwise you can't continue to, to bear all of their burdens. I need to listen to it again from that point of view. Yeah, you should, man. I mean, well, once it's out, you'll, you'll get the whole story, I think. So it'll be, uh, I, I got a, I think I got a preview. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, um, maybe your sister sent it. Yeah. She's sending you a demo. Then that's, that's yeah. great. But, um, yeah, the whole kind of like the, the, the point of the song too, is it just kind of rides the analogy of, you letting somebody go and letting go of the weight to kind of like holding a weight in the water. Um, so like everything is very on theme with like being in the water and drowning and something like that. So it's the kind of concept, like if you're floating with holding a 10 pound or 10 ton boulder, you're not going to be able to float, but if you let it go then you'll be able to float. So it was just that kind of concept. You need to let go. I need to let you go. Cause I can't carry the weight. That's like the, the main sentiment of the story. That's awesome. All right. Well, now we're gonna, I want to switch gears a little bit. And, and at, just um, as we wind down the interview, ask some, some questions that you would probably um, 
a little more fun, get to know your personality a little more. Um, so first question is, what's your favorite lyric? Oh, that I've ever written or from Drowning? No, that you've ever written. <sighs> I think, I think the favorite lyric that I've ever written hasn't come out yet. I think it's in a song that will be coming out like pretty soon. However, I have one of my lyrics tattooed. I have uh, this, this one here. This is from Broken. So that's the from my lowest, take me higher. That's like my, uh, I got that one tattooed because that was like the first song, obviously that I, I ever wrote and, uh, or that I ever put out. And that whole, like, I really like the idea of like, from my lowest take me high that that whole that really encompasses the sentiment of that song for me because it's like you're just reaching out and you want somebody to pull you up from your low point so i think that one like obviously since i have a tattoo i obviously like it but <laughs> i think um i think also just uh uh i carried the weight of your world on my shoulders that's one too that's in the bridge of drowning i really like that one um it's tough to think about it but yeah I think I think my my absolute favorite one uh is in a song that's gonna be coming out a couple songs from now so I'll, I'll reserve that <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one what is your dream concert here's a scenario you have four people that you can add to this dream concert one of them's a headliner and they could be alive or dead okay dream concert are they headlining like with me? Like, are we performing together or is it like a, uh, I'm it's open. your concert, dude. Whatever you want. Oh my God. That's so tough. Um, <clears throat> okay. Dream concert. I'm probably going to, uh, I gotta stop mentioning this guy every time I talk to people, but I, <laughs> um, Noah Kahan is like my uh, my like idol artist right now, and he actually recently became a a, a friend, um, which is really cool. So I think he's he'd uh, he'd be up there headlining with me. I think he'd be he'd be in there for sure. I think um, let's see who else do I there there are a few artists that I just like absolutely adore. Um, I think like performing with Bonnie Vare of some variety would be fucking crazy but that's just that's just i feel like that's every artist's you know ultimate thing so i guess i'd put bonnie bear in there uh noah kahan i'd probably do um i think like a simul is one that i've been listening to a lot recently s-y-m-l um and uh maybe gregory allen isakoff those are like my those are the guys I'm listening to right now. I think we could we could put on a, a pretty a pretty cool show. I don't know that I would even deserve to be in the same room as all of those people, but I think uh, yeah, I think that that would be a pretty moving show. There it is, my man. <laughs> um, what is your mom or dad signature dish? Ooh. So my dad cooks uh, basically he cooks every now and again, but he cooks like once a year. He cooks a big meal. Our, my dad is Jewish. My mom is Catholic. So it's an interesting uh, little dynamic we have in my family. But before we celebrate Christmas still. So before uh, every Christmas, like on Christmas Eve, he cooks a big Jewish meal. Um, so it's our, it's our Jewish food day. Um, and so he makes just like this huge Jewish spread. Um, right. And then we wake up in the morning and celebrate Christmas, which I think is interesting. It's fun. But that's been our like tradition for a long time. So his signature dish is that I would say it's probably like the brisket that he makes for that meal and like uh he makes like some really good like kugel and potato latkes and all sorts of like really really good jewish food um and then my mom's signature dish my mom has a, has a few um it's been a while since i've been home for a a, a home cooked meal sadly but um my mom makes some crazy burgers she makes amazing burgers she makes uh, this pasta sauce that's pretty out of this world. I'm trying to think of some of the other things that she makes. She Italian? She's not, but uh, it's just for you, you would think, right? By what I just yeah. said, but she she does not. 
Um, That's my family. And so, like, my family is literally Italian Jewish. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And That's so... Cool. Yeah, so I think I think those would be my, at least my my go-tos for her. But she also has a bunch of, like, um, you know, she, ma- she makes the Thanksgiving dinner every year. She makes these big, you know, widespread. So she they're, they're both awesome cooks, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I would probably say those are her, her signature ones. Nice. Um, I have two more questions for you. Okay. First one is, what is life teaching you right now? <sighs> life, man. Life is teaching me everything. But this is the first time for me uh, that I have ever been like completely independent because um, I was in college and like I've lived on my own and things like that. But um, never really like completely off my family and where I'm like sustaining myself until now. Um, so I, I think it's a few things. One, it is patience and to kind of try to stop and appreciate what you've done and what you have in the moment, instead of looking across the street and seeing the bigger house, seeing the, you know, um, the, the, the more streams, the bigger, whatever, the more money, the more, blah, 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 blah. none of it really matters. Um, it's like recognizing the stuff that is really important and the little things that make you happy every day. Like for me, the fact that I, I get to wake up and, and do music and get to live and survive. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm healthy and happy. And my family's happy and healthy. It's, there's, nothing more valuable than that and I think that takes precedence over everything else um so that's the big one and patience is is part of that because it's just like don't try to rush everything you can only work with exactly what you have in this moment you can work towards something uh but there's no sense in stressing over something that you don't necessarily have or you can't control right now because it's physically impossible for you to do anything else than to do something with exactly what you have right now Um, so I think that's part of it. I also think like the other big thing is, is trying to decide which people's opinions you want to listen to and which just don't matter. And it's like my, you know, the, the opinions of my family mean everything to me in, to a certain extent. Um, because at the end of the day, it's, it's really just like, caring about what other people think extensively uh, holds you back greatly. And it's the sort of thing, like I'm in rehearsals right now and uh, it's the first time I've ever done anything live. And I, I hear myself singing and it's like, you, you, you always doubt yourself. I, I always doubt myself. And I always like, it's almost like after every song you have this just like, fuck, like, am I even a singer, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. And I, I feel like a lot of artists actually relate to that. Um, but the truth is, is that, worrying about if somebody likes you or not or if you sound good or if you don't sound good all of that pales in comparison to the fact that you know my parents are healthy my sister's healthy my I can live I can go to bed at night my I, my sister's had a baby everybody's happy baby sweet you know I see one picture of that little baby and then I'm like okay what am I doing and everything goes away so I think it's just like patience and my priorities are, are what I'm I'm learning these days my man And then my last question for you, unfortunately, it has to be a last question. And I've enjoyed the every second of this interview. And I want to thank you so much for sharing your art. And I want to let you know, I believe in you, man. Go fucking do it. Go get your shit. But you you. are, you, you are that guy. Thank you, man. That really means the world. So the last question is, how have you almost died? How have I almost died? Yes. (sighs) like specific experience of how I've almost died. Yeah, dude, dude, we all have an experience where we almost died. Like, oh shit, man, I almost died. Yeah, 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 I'm digging, I'm, I'm digging. Hmm. But if you don't have one too, that's cool. No, 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 I, I definitely have had like some. I'm trying to think how I almost died. I feel like it, it's funny because I feel like so many people have had like, uh, we probably almost die all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you just never even know it um i've had a couple of like very close like if you were you know just two inches further forward in the car sort of situations uh or like 
there are some, you know, like I where I was slipping on ice in my car when I was in, you know, Minnesota or something like that. And your car starts to go towards like a, a ravine type thing that that and it just happens to stop right before I think like those I've had a few of those moments where it's just like, ooh, if if one thing could have been like not quite right. I had one too. I was on my grandmother's hill. Uh, she had a big like steep hill and I rode a skateboard down it. I rode it into oncoming traffic and I like wobbled off and spun. And then a car came boom, like right, right after I had fallen and I, it was really stupid. But if I had gone, you know, 20 seconds later, I probably would have gotten hit by the car. And that was, you know, so things like that, I think I've had a couple of those, but I haven't had anything defining where it's like a life changing uh, moment sort of thing. <laughs> what about you? Do you have, I'm sure you probably have. You, you no, probably have well, uh, I remember one time I was coming home from, I was in the military coming from Whidbey Island and exactly what you're saying, the, your car slips and you're sliding, you're please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. And there's a bridge right here and it, my, the rear of my car hit the bridge corner, just stopped. But if I would, if it would have went like this, I would have went down. Gone down. Oh my God, man. It's so scary. Wow. But, and, and then like surfing. I got when I was younger. I got pulled out by Riptide, and that's so scary. That was fucking scary as shit. Yeah, I bet that was scary. that. That's actually a terrifying concept. Yeah, actually, that's is my biggest, yeah, that's my biggest fear is drowning <laughs> because of that situation. Yeah, I believe it. I totally believe it. And spiders. <laughs> True. Those are also scary. <laughs> my man. Well, dude. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations and good luck with the single. Thank you so much, dude. It was it was so cool being here. Thank you for having me. All right, my man. We'll, we'll see you soon. Peace.